And the prosecution presented the theory that Amanda, Raffaele, and a local man, Rudy Gooday, viciously murdered Meredith. Someone's getting arrested over there. Oh, they just punched him. Did they? Yeah. Amanda and Raffaele, guilty of the murder of 21-year-old Meredith Kircher. And Meredith Kircher was probably about, you know, uh, six feet away from me. The prosecution told the jury that Amanda slit Meredith's throat with a kitchen knife. Gooday has already been convicted and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Oh, we were absolutely, like, terrified. Really? Yeah, because we were like, man, are we going to get dragged into something here? Oh, that's, oh, that's a dead snake. Oh, my gosh! Looking out the window and we saw a big, black, like, government-issued SUV come rolling down the driveway. Stomping ground, Perugia. Almost 16, 17 years later. Wow. Memory lane. So, like many small towns in Italy, Perugia is often parking at the bottom, taking the escalators up from the top into town. This is the part that I remember. All the underground old school catacombs, Perugia. This is just the pathway into the main historical centre. Yeah, nice view from here. Oh, there's a football oh, wow. field. Yeah, I know. Oh, is that your football field? Nope. It's another one. So, this is the main road that heads down that way to the lookout and then up that way is up to like was the main square so me and all my football me and all my soccer teammates used to go and hang out at the main square up here and yeah so this is where all the good shopping is down this end that's the pair of jeans look this is the Barchi shop they do collabs with like Disney and Sonic and Marvel Barchi is, just is like if you guys haven't tried Barchi you need to try it best chocolate on earth and um, Denzi, we need a pack of the milk, eh? I need With some right now. Denzi's been looking everywhere for the milk chocolate version. They like they don't have them everywhere. Ciao. Shall I have a pacchetto di baci a solo a latte? A più grande. Uno di questo. Grazie. Grazie mille. Ciao. Oh, Denzi, here you go. Come and get your milk chocolate. That's his favorite kind. We're about to come up to the side street that had the bar on it, which was called Merlin's back in the day. I have no idea what it's called now. But we always used to go there, get pizza, you know, get drinks and stuff like that. The team would go out there. We'd even go and watch some games, the Serie A games, the Italian football. We'd go back down there and see, uh, meet up with Roddy. Obviously became good friends with some of the locals and stuff. Oh man, this was crazy. Another candy shop that we went to yesterday. Oh yeah, Candy Lisa, that's a big one in Italy. We went but to this... This is one of the main streets that I would hang out on. I think I remember a sign up there that you used to hang out there saying Merlin. Yes. This is it. Yeah. Then on like Fridays and Saturdays, the queue to get in would be like all the way down here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It would be like this was like the spot. Close. Cuso. Wow. All closed, out of business. Was that a um, pizza place or a club? This was a, uh, both. It was oh. like a bar, restaurante, and also like a nightclub. Ah. And so you go through those doors, and you go down a flight of stairs, and it's all this big sort of open area, where on the left it's the restaurant, and then on the right is like the sort of dance floor, and then in this middle is like the bar. Ah. And we used to go kind of like watch like football mm. games and everything. But yeah, I remember standing out here cool. many, many nights. Looks yeah. like that kind of place. Yeah. So this was it, this was the spot, it used to be called Merlin's. Yeah. That's where we always used to just sit and hang out, like all the time. Oh uh, yeah. Used to sit there like, almost every day probably. All these bars and stuff like that, a lot just along here, is where you could just go get a beer and then come and sit on the steps. That is so crazy being back here. I think I have to sit down on these steps, for old time's sake. 
16, 17 years later, come back with my family. Ah, and this is what it was like. This was the view. And now these guys are here. <laughs> Far out, okay. <laughs> I'll have to show you guys the way that I used to walk home from town now. So this, this kebab store right here, this one right here is where we literally used to stop off every single time we came out with the boys. Was it a good kebab though? It was a really good kebab. Was it? We'd always get the one on the right. Oh yeah. The, the one in like the wrap. Oh man, it was so good. And then we always used to just get our kebab and then carry on. How long would it home. take you to walk home? From here, about probably about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. There was also another, um, uh, another like sort of nightclub slash bar down here that we used to go to as well. And they used to do like tango and salsa lessons and stuff. <laughs> and so yeah, it was. So did you uh, do some of those? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I went to one salsa night. It was uh, it was a bit of fun. You need to take me to one. Yeah. Were there chips? <clears throat> Were there chips? Yeah, salsa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the main entrance, just there, where those white pillows, are, uh, pillars are. So that's where I used to go and study Italian. Whoa, someone's getting arrested over there. Sounds familiar? Yeah. That's kind of Perugia in a bit of a nutshell right there. He's resisting. He's resisting, he doesn't want to get in. Are they going to have to start using some force? Oh mate, he does not want to get in at all. Oh, the cop, a, a copper on the bike has just arrived to help. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, there is there's a fight now. There's a scuffle going on. He oh man, he is not getting in the car. They're yelling at him now. Oh Matt, he's still outside the car. Oh, they just punched him. Did they? Yeah. They just fully so punched fun. him. Oh, they're like swearing at him. They're like, dentro cazzo. They're like, get the F inside. I think that guy who was on the bike just turned up wasn't even a cop. He was just like a random. Here's the hero who turned up on the bike. Where is he? Is He's behind the van. There he is. Nah, he's not a cop. He's just a random citizen who joined in. <laughs> Decided to just chuck him in the car. <laughs> Did he have the right to punch him? Uh, I don't know. Because I, I saw him go like this. Yeah, probably. I mean, the cops probably would just turn a bit of a, a blind eye on that one. So Perugia is really famous for its chocolate. Look how beautiful it is. What do you guys like the look of? I don't know. Ask me what the best one is. What's the best one? The best one is the best one. 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 It's the same. It's the same, but it's called the Pinto Ricchio here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Perugia chocolate. It's amazing. So bachi is the, the main, the commercial one. <laughs> this is like the special one, the specialty. Wow. More like homemade. No, no. More so homemade, good. right? Yeah, yeah. more, yeah. Mm -hmm. So good, eh? I could just eat like one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> and the gelato is just, oh, chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That looks so good. Amazing. Pistachio, it's not pistachio guys, it's pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the shortcut that I always used to take, heading down to our road. Yeah, so I used to cut down here. Used to come down these steps. I think no, this is yeah, this is how it used to be. That's right. I used to go down the driveway there and get down onto our road. But first, the place that you probably all came for. This is the house right here, where Rudy Guidi murdered Meredith Kircher. Deanna helped Amanda find this cottage overlooking the hills surrounding town. 
It was to be shared with three roommates, including British co-ed Meredith Kircher. As I was living here, that's the house. Right there. Wow. Yeah. And we live on that road. We lived on that road. In fact, I think that's my apartment building right there. That one sticking up out of the trees. Oh, uh, yeah. That's it. That's quite nice. That's my apartment building. Oh. So I remember it was uh, after it happened, this whole, whole place became like a bit of a circus. I mean, there was detectives, cops, you know, this whole road was like shut down for a long time while they were doing all their investigations and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I remember clearly, you know, it was, I think it was either the night before or the night before or maybe a couple of nights before that I was just sitting up in a pub or a bar up in the main town of Perugia and Meredith Kircher was probably about, you know, uh, six feet away from me. And uh, I never actually spoke to her, but we kind of knew, like she was friends with uh, a group, she had a group of friends that was also kind of friends with our group of friends. So a lot of the students sort of just knew each other and had their circles and stuff like that. But yeah, so I never actually spoke to her. But I saw her on many occasions, and um, Amanda Knox, not not as much, but I still kind of knew of her, like we knew of her, you know, around town and stuff like that, and yeah, she was just known as like another American student, always known as nice people, uh, and then also the other crazy thing is that the murderer, the convicted murderer, Rudy, um, uh, is, was actually close friends with us, so he actually used to come and hang out in our apartment block and spend time with us, like have dinner with us, and drinks with us and everything like that so we got to know him well as someone who's probably closer to the case than you know pretty much everyone out there who's watched it and seen the evidence and seen everything like that in my heart I personally believe that it was Gweddy Rudy Gweddy and him alone no help from anybody and Amanda and Raffaele are 100% innocent so that's, I'm just going to put that out there as my opinion knowing you know not knowing the other side of it but knowing Rudy yeah I know he was um, yeah a bit dodgy to say the least. I thought you said it was some random person. He was some random, random person. Random to her. Yeah, random to her. Uh -huh. Didn't know them. So Rudy and like Meredith and Amanda, they didn't know each other. But he must have known that this was an international student's house and that's why he tried to rob it. So yeah. Wait, why would he rob it? Because he wants money. You steal like jewelry and stuff like that, you go sell it and you get money. Mm -hmm. That's why they do that. Yeah, but like your life is at stake. Exactly. Why do it? because it's a petty criminal behavior. So as I was saying before about what I truly believe what happened, I think that it was Rudy. Um, you know, the whole reason that this whole circus, it basically turned into a big circus and like a witch hunt that the Italian justice system had, the prosecutor and everything like that, they had with Amanda, you know, is um, they just basically thought that they had solved the case straight away. You know, they, they just pinned it on the roommate, called her like a crazy American and all that sort of stuff. And they just, um, yeah, they, they went down the wrong road to begin with. And they, you know, like, Rudy, uh, Raffaele, which is Amanda's boyfriend, and Amanda, they both returned home. And they also both voluntarily, both voluntarily went to the police to help them with the investigation. And so she was basically like, you know, slapped around the head and, you know, told to uh, spill the beans and, you know, confess to the murder. But this summer, Amanda took the stand and told the jury that she was struck by police during questioning and the statement was false. So they only wanted one, they only wanted to go in one direction and that was Amanda. So, sorry, I'm walking up a hill right now. It's a bit tough. And so, yeah, it really just went to show how corrupt and how one-eyed and narrow-minded the Italian justice system can be. Here it's, uh, it's more guilty until proven innocent rather than the opposite so you can it was a blatant failure of the whole system from top to bottom in that murder and unfortunately Amanda was robbed of a few years of her life in prison so unjustly so I feel sorry for her watch out roads are crazy here no footpaths so right now we're at the main intersection of uh, like that was the area like our neighborhood where we stayed so we've got the pizza place up there pizza magic the little red pizza place we've got our house that we used to stay at down the uh, long driveway just down over there then we've got the bar that we always used to come get coffees and stuff like that and breakfast and then we've got the football a little football field or soccer field that we always used to come up with the boys and just like kick the ball around and practice and stuff whenever we weren't at training or playing games so we'll take you over there now 
Wow, so they have done this up. This used to be like a full on street court with like nothing but concrete. So it was all concrete. It was like, and all this graffiti was all here, all along the wall. But this is where we used to come and like practice our, our moves and stuff. Practice our shooting. This was it. This was the street court. The streets, the streets never forget. <laughs> I wish I brought my football. I know, we wish we, had our, we, we wish we brought our football so we could actually go and have a little play. But up um, Football's in the car. Yeah, that's true actually. It does look a bit locked up, eh? So it never, the, so this, they used to have the fence on either side, but then the side, actually, see the shorter fence? Yeah. This is what they had. They never had the tall nets. Oh, yeah. They, I think they only had them on each end, but they've like fully wrapped the whole court now. It looks like... Private. Wow. It's private court now. Fire out, man. So it's like, you can't come and play here whenever you want. That sucks. Man, if there's any players still here now, I feel sorry for them. They can't just come up here with the ball, because we used to do it all the time, like every day. I'm in. <laughs> nice. Oh, I, I can't remember if that gate used to be there. It looks pretty new, but I, we used to just come up here all the time. Oh man. I remember so many times smashing it into the net. It was so much fun. We, we, we would play like two on two, three v three, full court. Oh man. This is some awesome memories here. Oh, we need a ball. Oh man. The old neighborhood street court. So awesome. All right, guys, let's go down and see the apartment. This is the little shortcut just down here. Sometimes we used to just jump the fence and just sprint down the hill. These are the steps that we used to climb every day, whether it was coming up to catch the bus or grab a quick cappuccino and a croissant. So this is the driveway that we used to walk down to our apartment. We had all the top floor. I think there's about three apartments. I think there's about nine of us, so there's three per, uh, per apartment. But anyway, see these holes in the wall here? Yeah. This is where my pet snake used to live. <laughs> so, oh, I just saw a lizard going through one. Oh, I thought you saw the snake. No, so there was a snake that used to live on this wall. And every time I'd walk past, either going to the university or coming back home from like training, that I would always just like poke, like just go and say what's up to him. Oh, that's, oh, that's a dead snake. Oh my gosh! That's, pr that's probably him. He passed away. That's a dead snake right there. Wow, that's crazy. She got, she screamed. So now you know that the, all these holes in the walls is where a lot of snakes live. Okay. So, How about you that? can tell that that's perfect for a snake den, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this was my gate. But anyway, mine was at the top, top floor on this closest side, and the apartment was just this corner right here. This top right corner right there with that window. That was my lounge living room window. So the cars would come down and pull down into there, which is the parking lot. So that was one of the nights where we remember after Meredith got murdered, looking out the window and we saw a big black, like government issued SUV come rolling down the driveway, stop down here. And all these detectives and like military slash cop guys just got out and all poured into our, there's like five or six of them, all poured into the living room sat us all down together as a team and just started asking us all like questions and everything like that. And so, you know, they were like, where were you the night that she got killed? Like they knew that we knew him and they knew that this was a place that he frequented. So he, he came here quite a lot. So he would hang out with us, come here because obviously, you know, there's, he'd probably come here and just get like free food and stuff like that. Cause he was, he was a little bit of a street kid yeah. or like a street guy, a little bit of like a petty criminal. I mean, yeah, that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy and being, um, were you scared? Oh, we were absolutely like terrified. Really? Yeah. Cause we were like, man, are we going to get dragged into something here? Yeah. You know, we didn't know if it was going to be like, you know, are we going to have to go to court? Are we going to have to testify? Did you, like, did you ring your mum? How far is it going to go? Uh, yeah, probably not long after. Because, you know, the time difference and stuff like that. I probably called her the next day. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is where it all went down. This is where we got questioned and everything like that. This is where we stayed and did all of our own cooking and cleaning. And, and yeah, it was just us, well, just nice. the boys. Yeah. yeah. Is that why not you're such a good cook and clean? Oh. Cleaner. Of course. He never cleans, they never cook. <laughs> he does cook. Denzi, I'll pay you five euros if you stick your arm as far as you can into one of those no. holes. Oh, he'll get bitten. Are you kidding me? Five euros is not worth it. Yeah, that's I'm not sorry. worth it. 
He's picking a hole. 50 euros and you might be onto something. He's picking a hole. Yeah, give me 100 and I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more than five. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, yeah, so the documentary, uh, was that on Netflix? Yeah, we I watched think, it. Yeah we, yeah, we watched it. It was very interesting. Go and watch it if you want to know more about the case. Yeah, definitely. If you haven't heard about it or if you don't know I'm much sure about it. I'm sure they've heard about it, uh, the Americans at least, because just, she was American. Yeah, just know that I was like all... Obviously, uh, involved isn't the right word. No. <laughs> but like associated with like all the people involved. Yeah. It's crazy. So we used to get off our bus from training or whatever. <gasps> wherever we're coming from in town, grab our slice of pizza from in here. Doesn't look like they've really started up for the day. The pizza, uh, the no. oven's not going. So I don't think they have any pizza ready for us to try. Then that was our bus stop. Just over there on that side of the road. That's where we used to catch the bus down to training or up the hill to uh, the town, the center. And then our little supermarket that we used to go to. Oh, it was just down that road and around, just around that corner a bit. So that was our local supermarket. This is it. This is the field where I played for a year. Scored many goals here. <laughs> no, I had a lot of fun. I remember we used to have like, you know, some of the friends that we'd meet in town, our group of friends, they would all come and sit up here and watch us play. Because they heard that we were like the, you know, the foreign football players. And so they'd come along and watch us and stuff and Oh man, so many good memories here. Wow. All right, so I just spoke to my old coach, Bruno. I, I walked in to, onto the field and the, the coach from the local team came off and he was like, no, no, you can't come inside. You've got to go away. You've got to leave. And so I told him, and I was like, I actually used to play here about 15, 16 years ago for Bruno. Um, he was my coach. And he's like, oh, oh, you know Bruno? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, do you know where he is? And he's like, no, he doesn't come here anymore. They, he, tra he actually trains the under 15 national Italian team now. Yeah, so he does that. He actually trains the national Italian team and uh, he trains them in, Fiore in Florence. But on the side, he's starting up a new um, international academy. But that is from, uh, that, that's all based in Assisi, okay. which is where we're staying right now. So unfortunately, tomorrow all day he's in Rome with the national team. Yeah. So we can't catch up with him. But he, uh, I said, well, I might come back next time. Anyway, I got his number. I don't know if I'll be able to see him this time, but yeah, 16 years ago was the last time I saw him. That's crazy. So yeah, it was really awesome hearing him again, hearing his voice. But me and Denzi are about to go have a couple of kicks on this little mini field here. What a shape. Oh, is it me versus you two? Is this a rabbit hole or is it a fox hole? What? <laughs> 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 Couldn't get through the defense. <laughs> yeah, the murder of Meredith. Oh, what a goal! All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of our Perugia adventure. The play, revisiting the place that I lived for for a whole year of my life. Studying at the university and playing football and now oh nice save another full circle moment here with my family it's just incredible so good going down memory lane revisiting all the old places that I used to spend so much time at and uh, if you guys want to know more info on the murder the whole murder case thing make sure you make sure you go and check out the Netflix film called Amanda Knox so if you want to know a bit more info go and watch that you'll get the whole backstory and then you'll sort of be able to piece together the puzzle of me being you know associated and with that whole time and uh, being here when it happened yeah, so anyway guys i think that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it we love you guys and we'll see you in the next one